Hi, it's Azure Friday. I'm talking to Scott Guthrie about uh, Windows Azure, specifically virtual machines. Yep. So we talked about websites that run on top of virtual machines and manage them, but I can manage my own VMs, and I've actually got a bunch here. I've got some Linux ones and a farm. I installed Visual Studio. Mm -hmm. That just showed up recently. I went new, compute, virtual machine from gallery, and I was scrolling around, and then I said, Visual Studio is available now, too, because yep. I have MSDN. Yep. You'll actually see, uh, probably by the time this video is posted, you'll actually even see a new gallery that's coming out here. Mm -hmm. um, we have so many images now, they're kind of hard to find. Yeah. And so you'll see on the left-hand side, where it says right now, all platform images, yeah. we'll have a really nice uh, view with like a little bit of hierarchy. So you can see under Microsoft, all the SQL images, VS, oh, okay. um, SharePoint, there's Oracle, we've got Linux, we've got a whole bunch. And so, um, but yeah, we, I think we probably have like 30 or 40 images now in the gallery that are pre-populated. Yeah, well, not to mention the VM, op the Open Tech Community Gallery, yep. where there's another several hundred. And the beauty is you can create your own VM images as well. So it's funny that you mentioned that. If you go down to the bottom here, I've actually created, there you go, two Linux and one Windows, yep. specifically just for me. Yep. Will I have my own section as well? You'll have your own section as well. Yeah, and so the, the beauty about virtual machines is basically you can run anything you want in them. Uh, so you can run Windows, you can run Linux, you can even build your own operating system and run it. Uh, and um, uh, it effectively just looks like a virtual machine container that you'd run on your own local server mm -hmm. or local desktop. Uh, and the beauty about it is you're a full admin on the box. So mm -hmm. you own and you can put anything you want on it. And the way our virtual machine infrastructure works is we can attach disks, so you can have data disks attached to them. Right. Uh, so you could do terabytes of storage uh, if you want to do a database or something like that. Uh, you can set up a virtual network, so you can basically um, set up a private network and join multiple machines together uh, that can only talk to each other. Uh, we also provide load balancing support. Uh, and another advanced feature that we have, which is pretty nice, is something we call availability sets. And that's the ability for you to stand up multiple machines that act effectively like a logical tier. Mm -hmm. So you'd be like your web front ends or your databases. Uh, and when you put those machines in an availability set, we make sure that we isolate them within the data center so that if a server fails, or a power switch fails, or even right. a network router fails, uh, we guarantee that at least one of the machines in the availability set will always be up. Mm -hmm. uh, and so that's also a nice availability, reliability feature you can add um, to make sure that things are always working. I got uh, uh, an email from a, a gentleman who said he wants to go to the cloud, but he has an existing business mm -hmm. that runs in, in his own company on Hyper-V. Yep. And he said that he does a lot of like photos and videos and stuff, terabytes of it. Yep. But he doesn't want to rewrite his app to work in the cloud. And I was explaining how, well, you know, when you move into the cloud, you want to think about your storage, yep. put that into the storage. He wanted to know, could he take his existing VHD, put it up in the cloud, and then attach a bunch of other data VHDs so that he could basically buy himself time? Yep. Is that, is that something you could do? That's something you could do. I mean, so the beauty is, if you've got a virtual machine that runs on Hyper-V today, mm -hmm. Uh, we use the same VHD file format that Hyper-V does, and so you can literally upload that VHD and just boot it up inside Azure, mm -hmm. and then you can absolutely attach other data drive VHDs to it. Uh, if you actually have a, maybe an existing VM running, I can even show you how to do it. Um, yeah, we had, um, here we go, I had Corey come on and we attached, here we go. Yeah, so you just get the attach button down here, and you can say attach an existing disk or attach a new empty disk. Yeah. And you just point to that disk or that drive, and it'll go ahead and make it look like a device on the VM. So if you're in Windows, you go to Device Manager and you just format it with NTFS. If you're on Linux, you just mount it as a device and you can format it in like ETC2. Um, uh, and is that an okay solution? I mean, this person said, well, I know cloud people want things to be in blob storage. So he felt yep. a little bit like maybe it wasn't okay to have a VM no. solution. It's totally fine. I mean, at the end of the day, our storage system is actually writing to the same storage stamps that we use for blob storage. Ah. So it's actually the same physical drives when you attach one of these data drives. The nice thing about our storage system um, for blob storage, though, is uh, it does allow you to, not, to basically access the drives without having to go through a virtual machine. So if you have lots of images or videos, one of the nice things about it is it avoids you having to even set up IIS and stream off of it, you could just upload it and you're good to go. And you can actually access it over HTTP. So um, there are some benefits of going to blob storage, but from a physical persistence perspective, mm -hmm. attaching a drive and copying it as an NTFS 
it's storing it on the same spindles as blob storage. It's totally legit. So this would be infrastructure as a service where he wants to move his entire solution up and do that, and then possibly maybe move to platform yep. as a service later. Sure. Very What's cool. nice about Azure is the ability to mix and match. And so having this VM capability is really, really powerful to get started because it lets you kind of lift and shift a lot of your existing infrastructure and a lot of existing apps. Lift and shift. Uh, I like that. But the beauty is you can have a portal full of VMs and websites and SQL databases and take advantage of some of these managed services that we provide uh, so that you can also um, uh, avoid having to do the patching and all the manual maintenance that you would with a virtual machine and instead focus entirely on your app. Cool. Uh, be sure to check out friday.azure.com. We talked to Corey Sanders, and he went in-depth on all of these things, as well as virtual networks and disks and all that kind of stuff. Very Great. cool. It's Azure Friday.